Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. For many industrial giants around the world, entry into the metaverse world has become a macro goal. The metaverse is, as we have discussed, a fully functional virtual universe built on blockchain networks. Just the way we have expanded the space to the expand the way we are seeing the way the metaverse is expanding and the video games and esports are going to be able to get the Akashitkarahe. Did you know that gigantic financial institutions are flocking towards the digital realities? Or ye sub tub jabki dunya barme central banks ye decide nahi karpare ki bhai is web free sector ka kya karna chahiye? Kafi crazy hai, right? Hey guys, I'm Silas and welcome to another episode of Crypto Unfiltered and this week we are going to take a look at some really big banks who are joining the Metaverse Club and we'll also try to explore what's making them do so. मार्च के महीने में ही दुनिया के दो मशहूर बैंक्स HSBC और अमेरिकन एक्सप्रेस ने घोषित किया कि वो मेटावर्स में एंट्री करना चाहते हैं इसी के चलते उन्होंने अपने नाम भी रजिस्टर करवा लिए हैं उसी लिस्ट में जिसमें बाकी कुछ और कंपनीज भी हैं और जो सरकारी बैंक्स के विपरीत प्लानिंग कर रहे हैं Britain's HSBC bank chose the popular metaverse player the Sandbox for its digital debut into virtual reality the bank which is physically headquartered in London will be purchasing land in the sandbox. Believe it or not, virtual real estate is a real thing and people are investing millions in it. HSBC Metaverse may ek establishment khole wala hai in order to connect with the gaming and esport communities who are already trading in and earning from digital assets. American Express, on the other hand, has filed for trademarks seeking official permission to operate in and around the metaverse world. I know that you are a little strange thing that American Express, which was started in 1850, was in an electronic state transition to an electronic state. Now, it has been started in 2022, and JP Morgan became the first American bank to enter the virtual universe. It launched a swanky lounge called Onyx in its virtual lounge in the Decentraland Metaverse. The largest bank in the US has a tiger roaming around its virtual office located somewhere in digital Tokyo city. The bank has said that even in the metaverse, it can facilitate cross-border payments, foreign exchange, financial assets creation, their trading and safekeeping because the metaverse has its own population, GDP and currencies. Yahi nahi, Visa, jiske cards hum aur aap jaise log bhi kafi apne wallets mein use karte hai, purchase a rare CryptoPunks NFT to announce its foray into the new phase of digital finance. Agar valuation ki baat ki jai, to metaverse market ki valuation 800 billion dollars ki seemao ko 2024 tak chhuta hua nazar aara hai. The world of digital collectibles or NFTs is projected as equally fruitful after the industry churned over $25 billion in sales. While all of these companies do not vouch on metaverse success, they are keen on exploring newer avenues to engage with the younger, more tech-savvy generations. Now the question is that in this digitizing industrial climate, mein, are Indian institutions doing enough? What does it say about the web free sector when these huge financial institutions are huddling into it? Financial institutions are lining up to take part in the investments to forming the web three ecosystem. Most of these institutions have been part of the run up for web two, whether it be the tech run up for Tesla, whether it be um, e-commerce, whether it be social media. So they're very aware of that of tech running the world. So that's why they're switching over to web three now. Um, you'll see that a bunch of these have already invested in the core core projects of Web3, whether it be OpenSea, the, ba the main NFT marketplace, whether it be the main wallet, Metamask and Infura by consensus, or whether it be Polygon, an Indian company which just raised for $50 million from blue chip investors. 
Do you think Indian financial institutions that have a brand new chance to establish themselves as a totally new world need to buck up? Indian financial institutions definitely need to buckle up. Uh, they're definitely lagging behind, but that's also due to Indian regulatory system, which hasn't defined any clear framework for um, investors to invest in Indian uh, Web3 startups. Uh, similarly, Indian Web3 startups don't have a clear mandate about how to go about raising capital in India. Um, this has caused a lot of confusion and I think that's the reason that Indian financial institutions haven't been able to freely invest um, in Indian uh, companies. We at Taiki are working with Indian Web3 companies as, as well as the government to try to ensure uh, we can find a, some sort of a framework for uh, this to work out for everyone. Twitter India's former head Manish Maheshwari and Microsoft's former executive Tanay Pratap are trying to create virtual classrooms with their latest venture in backed Metaversity in India. The recent days have been pretty defining in terms of crypto adoption. Starting today, India's tax laws on virtual digital assets come into effect. While a tax of 30% has been levied on all incomes generated from the transfer of virtual digital assets, 1% TTS has also been imposed on each crypto transaction. The government of India has decided to enforce the laws despite criticism from the industry leaders over not providing tax relief on setting up the crypto ecosystem. After receiving close to $100 million in crypto donations, Ukraine legalized crypto businesses for operating in the nation. धीरे धीरे उन देशों की संख्या बढ़ती जा रही है जिन देशों ने क्रिप्टो को रिस्ट्रिक्ट करने की जगह रेगुलेट करने का निर्णय लिया है अमेरिकी प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडेन ने एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑर्डर्स को साइन करते हुए यह कहा है कि वो क्रिप्टो करेंसी के ऊपर आप ज्यादा निगरानी रखेंगे और यूएस फेडरल रिजर्व को भी अर्ज करेंगे ये देखने के लिए कि सेंट्रल बैंक को अपनी खुद की एक डिजिटल करेंसी बनानी चाहिए ऑल्सो द क्रिप्टो सेक्टर इन दुबई विल नाउ फॉल अंडर अ न्यू सेट ऑफ रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क वाइल ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज प्लानिंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस टैक्स रूल्स फॉर द क्रिप्टो सेक्टर वियतनामीज फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री इज ऑल्सो स्टार्टिंग इट्स रिसर्च ऑन द काइंड ऑफ क्रिप्टो रूल्स दैट फिट वेल द कंट्रीज इकोनॉमी वियतनाम इज लाइकली टू गेट अ डिजिटल करेंसी इन द टाइम्स टू कम Bitcoin and Ether, the two most valued cryptocurrencies, rose to forty-seven thousand three hundred US dollars and three thousand four hundred and fifty US dollars, respectively. Dogecoin showed some recovery, nudging Shiba Inu also up the ladder. The total market cap of the crypto sector rose to two point one four trillion US dollars as of March thirty-first. In the beginning of the month, the same figure stood at 1.72 trillion dollars. Experts have heaved a sigh of relief now that finally the market is beginning to show more profits than losses. A lot can be credited to all the countries that are working to bring crypto under proper legal framework. More investors would feel safe investing in the sector if the crypto industry matured over its presently volatile nature, experts believe. Time to look at how the crypto market is performing, especially for major tokens. Because as an investor, you need to keep an eye out for numbers like these. If you look at our crypto tracker for the week, we can see that Bitcoin is down by 1.85%, and Ethereum has also suffered a 1.39% slump. Tether, USD Coin, and Ripple are also down, while Solana is in the green zone with a 7.14% rise. I know the picture is a bit difficult for you to understand because, as we know, crypto is volatile. But remember, if you're investing, you're in it for the longer run. That's it for Crypto Unfiltered for this week. If you have any questions around crypto or any jargon that you do not understand, please send them across to us on our Twitter and our Facebook pages. This is Silas John signing off with the promise that I will be back with more crypto very soon. Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions.